Hi friends, welcome to Torah Led Homestead. This video series is directed at those who would ask the question, what does it mean to be Torah observant? In this series, I will answer some very basic questions about what it means to be a Torah observant believer in Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. If you haven't already watched it, start with my video called, What Does It Mean to Be Torah Observant? That is a basic intro to this series. Rather than provide you with every solid answer that you need, I'm instead hoping to encourage you to go to the Father and ask Him to show you the truth that He wants you to know at this stage in your walk. I hope that you will ask Him to open up your eyes to the truth of His Word so that you can better understand Him and better walk in the ways that He has set up for you. I hope that you will ask Him for understanding about everything that I present to you in this series. I've created these videos with prayer and thoughtfulness, hoping to add to the body of encouraging videos that are already on here made by other Torah observant believers. I hope this information is a blessing to you. If you have any questions about keeping Torah, please feel free to leave comments below or you can email me with the email that is in the description box of this video. I might add my perspective on your question to a future video. Now let's get started with today's topic. Hi friends, this video is going to be all about talking to others about Torah. Now if I could sound off a thousand warning bells and whistles right now without being super irritating, I would. <laughs> I think that this is a really important topic and if it's not done right, carefully and with prayer, it can be really messy. <laughs> I've talked with so many people in the Torah keeping community about how they approach their friends and family when they first came to Torah, and that many of them have so many regrets about how things were handled. They had the best of intentions, but it just did not go how they were hoping that it would. I'm hoping that some of the things I say in this video will help you avoid some of those pitfalls. Please, please be very careful about how you talk to others about your new found walk. <laughs> When we first came to Torah, we lived far away from our family. We still do, actually. Um, everybody is out west, and we are in the southern Midwest. We are in northwest Arkansas. So about 2,000 miles in between. Uh, so as we started doing things differently, the way we dropped off certain holidays and adopted new ones, um, that didn't really affect our family too much because we weren't able to spend holidays with them anyway. A lot of what we did, they saw us do through our Facebook posts. <laughs> they were watching us online and watching changes happen. Then of course I started this channel and now um, everything's broadcasted <laughs> for anyone to see. It's partially why I started this channel, sort of a you know, passive way of sharing the information. <laughs> But we really decided that we wanted to live it out before we started preaching it. We came into this walk not knowing a whole lot, but knowing that it was right. And we felt the Father's leading. And so we didn't want to share things that we weren't too sure about. And so we took about a year without even watching a video from someone, <laughs> you know, without really being influenced by anyone other than just a handful of people that we actually knew and that were in weekly relationship with. And we just spent time hearing from the Father and establishing why we believe what we believe. And we didn't do a whole lot of sharing it with other people. When it came to leaving our church, we had to make a clean break. We just one day said, we're leaving now. <laughs> I have a video about how these last three years have gone after leaving our church here. If you guys want to watch that. So when we have our eyes open to something that's so exciting, we want to tell everybody, right? We're zealous and we should be zealous. We just need to be careful about what we say to other people who haven't had their eyes open. We have to remember it's us. It's me who's had my eyes open. And just because mine are does not mean everyone else's are. Usually telling everybody everything is done with the best of intentions, right? We think of the thing that brought us to the understanding and remove the scales from our eyes and we think that will be the very thing that will help our mom or our brother or our friend to see that what we're seeing. But unfortunately that is not how it works. But in some ways it's fortunate that it doesn't work that way, right? Because we all have our own story and how Yeshua brought us to this understanding of him in a better way. 
Um, so we really do want people to have their own stories. And this can be a hard concept to understand, right? I wanted the father just open everybody's eyes. And I don't really know, but I know that it's not new. We heard the words of Yeshua about how I speak to them in words they're not going to understand, but you will understand, right? He says that, and we'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute. Um, but I don't really know all of the reasons why the Father just doesn't open everybody's eyes all at once. But I do think that there are certain personalities that are more receptive. For a lot of us, once we saw the truth, we just jumped right in. There was nothing holding us back. We didn't question, we just committed, and then he began giving us all of the solid reasons why we made a good decision. He made things more clear and our questions were answered as we just walked out his ways in faith. I think it has a lot to do with someone who is really wanting truth. Someone who is willing to walk away from everything and lay down everything that the world has to offer in order to pursue him, right? We know the story of the rich young ruler. You know, we read about people who needed to go put their houses in order first. They needed to go and you know, take care of things and then they would follow him. There's all these things that were more important than just stopping and following him, laying everything down. There are certain personalities who will do that, and I think those are the ones that the Father can more easily call. I think also that it takes a person who is willing to be okay with being wrong. They want to pursue truth more than keep their pride or keep their reputation or keep the status quo. They just want the truth, and then they want to walk in it. Now, this is not to say that your friends and family aren't these kinds of people. It's just that we all have to get there in the Father's timing. And he works with each one of us uniquely. So while he has just now shown you today, it may be a while before he shows someone else that's important to you. Maybe it's time for you to have another layer pulled back in your understanding. And we must be very humble about this because it's a gift that he's trusting us with. Any understanding or knowledge or wisdom that we have comes from him. We can't boast about it. We can't put ourselves up on some kind of a pedestal or allow others to put us up on some kind of a pedestal. But on the flip side, we should also not be so humble <laughs> that it's a false humility and we refuse to prophesy and say the things that he has given in his word, the truths that he is sharing um, in order to bring others to him. That's why we're given the gift and the understanding in the first place is for other people. In our zeal, we can be tempted to sit our family down and say, the church has lied to you. <laughs> Those holidays you're celebrating, they're pagan. The law is for today and we are sinners if we don't follow it. <laughs> and while all those things are true, and people don't care so much if you're the one doing something strange, they have a real problem when you start to infringe on how they are doing things. How dare you judge my Christian walk? <laughs> but it's true, we are supposed to judge those around us, right? We need to judge their characters, judge their integrity, judge their actions, because how else are we going to choose the right influences for our children or the right mentors for ourselves, the right people that we want to fellowship with who aren't going to lead us down a wrong path? Yes, we do make judgments about people. We just don't cast judgment on them, right? But many people see conversations like this as attacks and they don't want to have their own ways upset. Honestly, this is probably the hardest part of Torah keeping for me. Being set apart and walking in his ways is beautiful and fulfilling, and I would never want to go back, but it's literally being set apart. And sometimes that's being set apart from people that you really care about. Yeshua warned us about this. He told us that his message was divisive. Peace and unity between all people is not promised anywhere. Peace and unity between brethren is encouraged. So most people are going to need to see this walked out first. My advice to you is for the people who aren't right there in your everyday life, you know, weekly life, for those people, I really wouldn't even say anything. I would just answer the questions that they ask me and just walk it out. Let people see you walking this out. Make sure you have a reason for every new thing that you adopt into your life. So if you start keeping the Sabbath, understand why you're keeping it. Understand, was the Roman Catholic Church that changed it to Sunday, that God never changed that? Nowhere in his word do we read that he changed it. But we do read over and over and over and over again that we are to keep the seventh day Sabbath just the way that he designed. Um, know why you have seats hanging from the edges of your clothing. <laughs> know the scriptures in Numbers 15 that talk about the tzitzis and the reason for wearing them. If you're going to adopt something into your life, know why you're doing it. That way, when someone has a question, you're not just like, well, my friend said this is what the Bible says. 
Okay, that's why people think that we're a cult. <laughs> they think that we're just blindly following somebody. Most fellowships don't have a leader. They just get together and have a Bible study and have a talk and I'll hang out. And there are no actual real big fancy leaders in the Torah community. I'm really thankful for that because we all have our eyes on Messiah and his word following him, right? And not some, some person. So know why you're doing what you're doing so that you can answer the questions that are put to you. Otherwise, just walk it out quietly and humbly and let people wonder about you. They'll come to you with all the questions and you won't have to go to them with the nervous uncomfortableness of trying to explain yourself. In fact, I think it's really important to just be careful about not feeling like you have to explain yourself in the first place. If you're following the Father, then what else really matters? That could be a whole other video in itself. <laughs> If you've decided to leave your church, leave peacefully. Don't try to convince anyone right now. Don't sit your pastor down and show him 15 things that he missed in the Bible. Other believers, unfortunately, see Torah keeping as pride. They see it as a cult. They think that we are on purpose placing a heavy burden on ourselves in order to be better Christians than them. Not everybody sees it that way, but a lot of people do. That is unfortunate and that's not at all the way it is. The truth is, as much of what goes on in the church are man-made pharisaical traditions, all following one leader or a handful of leaders, and that's kind of more the definition of a cult, but again, a topic for another video. If you leave your church, leave quietly, leave humbly, leave peacefully. Unfortunately, many people in the church think that we have denied Jesus as our savior and that we are turning Jewish. It's really just a lack of understanding. And there's not a lot you can do about it other than just live your life and wait for the questions to come. Most anything else you do, unless it's with someone who has a really open mind, is probably going to get messy. The enemy has done an amazing job of confusing God's people all throughout the generations, right? The modern church is just his latest scheme and confusion. So be honest, but you don't have to be super detailed. When we left our church, we just said, we feel the Father is taking us in a new direction and we're ready to step out into it and this just isn't the right place for fellowship for us anymore. No blaming, no fights. They'll do with this what they will, but you want to be able to walk away without any feelings of guilt or any worry about who you hurt. When your friends ask about your new faith, answer them honestly, but don't try to turn them. <laughs> There'll be time for all of that later once you are more grounded in what it is that you're doing and once you have an example to show people. Now this isn't really a Torah keeping thing, but when my husband and I were first married and first having children, we decided that we wanted to homeschool them. My stepmother was a public school teacher and the majority of my family did not know anything about homeschooling. They didn't have a lot of faith in me. I was very young. <laughs> so they probably had lots of good reasons why they were cautious. But I was dead set on homeschooling. I was going to do it. That was 23 years ago. And it's just been in the last probably nine or 10 years that the majority of our family has started to give us compliments and talk about what great kids we have, what intelligent kids we have. They are very socially rounded and all the things. When before I was getting so many negative things, they had to watch it actually work. They had to see the proof that my idea was a good idea and then it worked out. And that's probably how this is gonna go as well. The people who you care about and who care about you are going to need to see you walking it out and knowing that you have not joined a cult, <laughs> that you do still love Jesus, and that you are just taking the next step of faith and obedience to him. Once they see that, then you can start sharing with them all of the wonderful ways that this life has blessed you and maybe they will want to know what you have that they don't have. When I was younger and in the church, that was the message that they would give us. Live your life for Jesus so that everybody will wonder what it is that you have that they don't have. But unfortunately, the majority of mainstream Christianity looks like the world. So why would they give up a Sunday just to go do all the same stuff that they're already doing? Nothing's changed other than just taking the name of Jesus, but they're taking it in vain. You can watch that here. 
we want our lives to actually change, our behaviors to change, our words to change, our entire countenance and demeanor to change. If you know me and you go back and watch some of the videos I made a few years ago, you will see a change in me. My own family points it out often. There has been an entire change in my countenance since I have started following the Father in obedience in the way that he designed for me to do so. It really does change you and people really will start asking questions. But for now you're stepping out into something new, right? And few people are gonna know how to be supportive of you in something that they don't understand. As your friends and family have questions, remember that it's Yahweh, God, through the Holy Spirit who draws them to him. If they are not receiving a biblically true message that we are sharing, then the Holy Spirit has not yet convicted their hearts. That means there is nothing that we can say that's going to convince them if the Holy Spirit hasn't convinced them, right? We just have to be patient and pray. Yeshua said in John 6, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So honestly, I would prepare yourself to be a little discouraged because discouragement is probably going to come. But we need to remember Yeshua's words. He was asked why he spoke in parables. And let's read from Matthew 13 to see what he said. Starting in verse 10, it says, And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. I want to stop there for just a second, because as I'm reading that, I am reminded, I always had a real problem with this scripture here. Forever, for whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance, but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. I never understood that. I thought it was like stuff, right? <laughs> if you have a whole bunch of money in your bank account, I will give you even more money in your bank account. But if you just have a little bit of money in your bank account, I'm going to take that away too. <laughs> That's not at all what he's saying here. He's talking about understanding. Whoever has understanding, has their eyes open to truth, even more truth will be given in abundance. But he who does not have understanding, who does not know the truth, even the little bit of understanding he has is going to be taken away from him. And we see that today. The Father is starting to judge our earth. The wheat and the tares, they are being separated. People are being separated out. Those who are seeking understanding and truth in his ways, willing to lay down their lives in order to know him, and those who just can't give up the things that hold them, they may think they love Jesus, but they're not truly sold out to him in a way that causes them to lay down everything and walk in whatever way he would call them. Then Yeshua goes on to quote Isaiah. He says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. He's talking about the prophets of old who knew Messiah was coming, who would have recognized him had they been alive in these days. It is true that there are some who have ears to hear and who do not have ears to hear. In Matthew 13, 9, he says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He's not saying, if you have ears, listen. <laughs> He's saying, if you are tuned in, are you listening with understanding? Are you seeking to understand his truth? Are you willing to lay down all your own ideas, preconceived ideas, all your own truth, all the traditions of man? Are you willing to lay that down with a clean slate and just let him fill you with his truth? Those are the people who have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to understand. Here's one more portion to think about. This is from Daniel 12. He's talking about the end times, the end of the age. And he says, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. 
There will be a time of distress, such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of heavens, and those who would lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. There are things that we are coming to understand now because it's time for us to understand them. This, this understanding that the Father said, you know, roll these up, tuck it away, because it's not for you to understand this right now. Now is the time that we are starting to understand some of this stuff. We are starting to put the pieces together in Revelation and in Ezekiel and all of these prophets way back in the day that were giving information. It's a little hard to piece together. It's all coming together because this is the Father's time. This is his time of revival. His judgment is being carried out. It's just beginning. We can see it all over our world. You know things have been different these last few years. And it's just beginning. And all of the things that the Bible prophesies about the time when things really start shaking up and getting ready for Yeshua's return, those things are being put into place very rapidly, actually. But even in this time, the Father is awakening people to his ancient paths. He is raising up a generation of people who are coming back and being restored to the way he originally gave for us to live, his commandments, his Torah, his instructions to us. This is that end times harvest, that revival that the church has been praying for. It's not looking like they thought it would look. Many of them are calling this a cult. Many of them are saying that we have walked away. But I'll tell you what, I've been walking with Jesus, Yeshua, for 30 years. And the last three years that I have been actively pursuing, following his instructions, and walking away from everything that the world has me stuck in and all of the traditions of man, these have been the three years that I have been so close to him that I have not questioned his existence. I have not questioned his word. I have not questioned him at all. The very first time in my life that I have been 100% secure in my relationship with him and knowing him, this is not a cult. This is his ancient path that is reiterated over and over and over in the scriptures that we've all been told to avoid reading because they just mattered for a certain people at a certain time and it's all outdated. No, it's not outdated. It all flows together. This is a revival of truth. Once you feel a little bit solid, a little stable, you kind of know why you're doing what you're doing and understanding a little bit more about why you believe what you believe, you get a good feel for what the word has to say, you get a good feel for what Yeshua came to do when he did come to earth as a human. <laughs> Then it's really important that we go and walk out Matthew 28. Matthew 28 was given to everyone, not just to the preachers. <laughs> Let's read the end of Matthew 28, see what he has to say. This is a two-part command from Yeshua. So sometime uh, after his resurrection, he got everybody together, all his disciples, and he's like, go to the mountain, I want to talk to you guys. And he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, he wasn't just talking. I mean, this at this point, he was probably just talking to his 11 disciples because that's what it says. But he wasn't talking just to them forever. He was talking to all of us who would read these words, right? Because he didn't mean for just these 11 people to go into the whole world and talk to everybody, <laughs> baptize them all, teach them his ways, and then once they died, it would be all be over with. No, they were to go out and make more disciples. And then more disciples could be making more disciples. And that was to be carried on throughout all the generations until his coming again. And so something that really uh, answered a lot of questions for me about ministry, women in ministry, my personal role in ministry. Those things were all answered when I read this portion of Matthew 28. This going into all the world and preaching the gospel, baptizing people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that is for all of us. Any of us who would be Yeshua's disciples. If you are following him, you are his disciple. Therefore, all of us not only have the right to do these things, but we are actually commanded to, to preach his gospel and to baptize people. 
it's okay if you baptize someone. I baptized someone in their hot tub last spring and it was wonderful. <laughs> and then the second part of this says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Not only are we to preach the gospel, share the good news, baptize people, but we're also to teach them the commands of God. Those commands are found in Torah, in his instructions. Everything that Yeshua said all came from Torah, every bit of it. <laughs> Those are the commands we are supposed to go out and teach people, right? So this is a, a commission for all of us to do. Whether you sit someone down and have a one-on-one, -on -one, whether you make a YouTube channel, please make a YouTube channel. We really need more people on YouTube that know the truth and are sharing it in a joyful, happy, positive way. You can share on social media, write a book, write a song, whatever, but get out there and share the message. It's part of the commands from the Father through His Son Yeshua. You're going to find yourself dusting your feet off a lot. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but for those who don't want to hear the message that we have to share, there is one other thing that we can do, and that is prayer. And honestly, praying for people is the most powerful way that we can reach them. I hope this video was inspiring and hopefully a little encouraging, if not a bit discouraging as well. Most of all, I just want to caution you because the real, real important thing here is that people know Yeshua. When they know him and they have a relationship with him, then their eyes can be opened just like ours were. And then he can begin sharing his truth with them and showing them the ancient path, showing them the set apart way, the narrow path that he wants them to walk in. A lot of times I just pray that the Father would show people the truth that he wants them to know. I don't know what it is he wants people to know. I only know what he's showing me. So just make sure that everything you're doing is covered in prayer. I hope you have a beautiful day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.